Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Civilization VI as Vietnam. And in this episode, I'm gonna drop some hot takes. But before we get to the hot takes, let's go to the cold takes. Let's 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 do the ice cold. Let's get the ice cold stuff out of the way first, and then we'll get to the hot takes. Now, I think a nice cold take here is that I need to get both of these turtles improved, so I need to buy a builder here. But I don't have the cash to buy a builder, so what we gotta do is we gotta try and finagle our way into getting enough cash from someone. Hello. Thank you. All right. So now we should have enough cash to get that builder and send it out. Now we're making about 71 tourism per turn, which is translating to about 46 tourism based on, you know, religious differences, all that sort of stuff. So what I need to do, I think, is to go through here and just get open borders from everyone I can. We'll start at the top of the list. I wish there was, I wish um, Quick Deals had a better way of doing this, but the Quick Deals mod just, I don't know, for whatever reason, it just doesn't have a way to buy open borders, which is arguably the most important thing that you would want to use quick deals for because it's the thing if you're doing a tourism victory that you do literally the most I I, I, just, I just I haven't figured it out like how do I how do I how do I buy open borders with quick deals somebody at the quick deals mod guy link him this part of the video and tell him I need him to make it so I can buy open he probably already has and it's probably a reason he can't do it but anyway so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be planting a lot of forests and I'm going to be dropping some hot takes here. Now, this morning, I woke up after playing Dungeons and Dragons last night, and I felt great. I had a great time. I really enjoyed it. I was back on the saddle, right? We hadn't played D&D for a while, so we're kind of missing it. Been kind of excited to get back on the back on the road with D&D. Really, really great, by the way. If you don't know, I play D&D nearly, I would say, every two out of four or three out of four Tuesdays at, at 9 p.m. my time, which is like... 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I actually don't even know. Figure it out, okay? Tides of Death, it's called. Look it up. Reddit.com forward slash Koibu or something like that. You can check it out there. You Figure it out. Look up Tides of Death. Yeah, so I played D&D &D and I went to bed and I, when I woke up. I was in good. I was in good shape. We had a uh, yeah research alliance with Scotland. I'll take a research alliance with Scotland because it means any trade routes that do in fact go between me and Scotland will net me extra science. But yeah, I, I, I woke up this morning. I was in a good mood. I was feeling good and I had, you know, stuff going on. And then uh, I went for a walk. I took my nephew on a walk and he's going to the dentist. So he got to get his like, you know, I, I bought him a uh, vit hit, which is like an a, a, kind of like a very light kind of soft drink that doesn't really have too much acid in it because he got to look after his teeth because his teeth he got like you know he's, he's, he's a teenager he's got teeth they, you know and they need to be fixed like 99% of teenagers do and uh yeah, I came home. I was feeling good. I I was I was having an amazing morning. Sat down. I got a snack. I, I had some peanuts. And then I sat down and I opened up Reddit. And there was a thread on Reddit. And it was called, uh, it was something like, Patients with obesity feel shame to buy their doctors. And, you know, the second I saw that, it boiled my piss, okay? I, like, the second I saw that headline, my, my like, literally, instantaneous piss boiling. I'm not even joking, okay? And let me tell you why. It's because I saw there was like 400 comments on this thread. And you know, when you see a headline like that, that has to do with fat people or a health issue or something like that, and there's a big lot of comments, you know that thread is a shit show, okay? And I was like, I'm about to walk in here and see some of the hottest, least informed takes of my life. And I was 100% right. I absolutely called it. Not even a shadow of a doubt, because I go into that thread. Now keep in mind that the context of this article is the article is about how doctors uh, believe that patients are fat, lazy, you know, uh, patients who are obese, it's, it's their fault because they're overweight, because they're blah, 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 blah. I'm going to be killed by Korea. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> All right, so in order to deal with the Korea problem, there's two things we're going to do here. We're going to move you to there so we can chop out walls. Uh, additionally, we are going to get this guy and I want to upgrade him with iron. I sold all my iron. Shice. So let me think about this. What we will do is we'll put Hercules in the city and teleport Hercules to Kuang Tree. Let's make sure we buy that. We need to buy that tile. I can do that next turn. Uh, yeah. So like basic, basic stuff, right? You would think that healthcare professionals would have a better understanding of like the complex issue of obesity and obesity is a complex issue. It's not a simple, oh, you know, you ate too much, you're fat, bingo, bang. Like that's like the five, that's like the two head take. Okay, if your forehead uh, is like the size of a quarter, that's your take on the issue. And that was every take in that thread. Now, the, the important thing is, what really boiled my piss about that, isn't that 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 was the take? It's that the, the, the study that was conducted was about healthcare attitudes towards obese people, okay? And then the literal entire thread was not about that at all. Like the comment section. The entire comment section was about, oh, look at these people doing healthy at every size. Ba 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 It's like, dude, did you eat? You didn't even read. You didn't even do the homework. You didn't even read the article that was to do with this. You didn't You didn't even do the groundwork to even have this opinion. Because this is not what the, the study was about. It wasn't about that. And it, it yeah, it's it super, like, hyper boiled my piss. I, I just, it, because, like, here's the thing. I, there's probably people in this 
video right now typing up a response like actually potato boogie I happen to know I was fat once and I know how I lost weight and blah 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 it's like yeah that's great dude because here's the key thing okay everyone hates fat people and I, that's just true you cannot tell me I'm wrong when you can go into literally like any thread on reddit on blah 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 and anytime fat people are talking about how like you know what the way fat people are treated kind of sucks people will just be like yeah but it's your fault you deserve it you ate your way into this problem. And that's like, it just it belies a complete misunderstanding of obesity. Did you know that like less than 10% of the people who become obese in childhood will ever, ever return to a normal weight? Did you know that people who suffer abuse are more likely to be overweight adults? There are so, and like, there are so many things like that that go into the complex, it's a complex issue. Now the solution is really, really simple. That's the thing. Fat people, here's my take, okay? People who are fat are not responsible for getting fat because most of the time, it was something that happened to them. It was, some, it was a lifestyle that they were given to. They got fat when they were kids. Their parents didn't look. Whatever the thing is, there's a causal thing that isn't their fault. And what they are responsible for is getting healthy. That is the key sea change in this issue that I would like to see people like, not your fault that you're fat, okay? You got there through a complex web, whatever it was, you got there somehow, but it is your responsibility to get out of it. That's the take I would like to see people adopt because I think it's a way more empathetic, understanding and meaningful take. And it really, it really frustrates me. It really frustrates me that that's not the take because really, I think people are just sitting around waiting for reasons to hate fat people because that's what, that's what I see. That's what I see people do. They, 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 people are sla slavering, slothering, whatever the word is, Th their, their mouth is watering at the idea that they can uh, talk down to a fat person who, you know, because it's like, it's your fault, you overate, you did this, you, you, you know, the classic Bill Burr line is, you ate your way into this problem, you can walk yourself out. And it's like, yeah, but like, the, the problem is the blame. That's the thing that pisses me off. Um, and I guarantee you, right, before you respond, potato, you're actually just wrong, fat people are fat because they eat too much. Go, I just, please ask, go read the comments, and I guarantee you, there will be people talking about their struggles with obesity. These are not, it's just, it's not as simple as people think it is. It's just, it just isn't. It just isn't. It can't be. Nothing in life is that simple. The solution is simple. The solution is eat less, move more. But even that's difficult, right? Because that sidelines and forks into, like, if you've got somebody who suffered abuse, maybe they have self-esteem, maybe they have depression, maybe they have blah, 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 all these different issues that could be coming up and that are acting as like a systemic barrier to them solving the problem. There's so much that goes into it. It really pissed me off. Like, I, I read some of the comments and they were just like, it was like the most brain dead normy uneducated uh, uh, takes that you could imagine. And it just, I, it, it really, it, it pissed me off. That's all, that's all I, I, you know, what else am I going to say? It really pissed me off. So I'm going to take out limes. I'm going to plug in conscription so I can get more gold, so I can buy more tiles. And then I'm going to take land surveyor so I can continue to buy more tiles, Merchant Confederation for more tile purchasing. And then I'm going to go ahead and look and see. I'm going to get both of these tobacco resources online and sell one of them. I think the other thing I would like to do is to maybe buy luxuries. Okay, nobody's selling luxuries. Yeah, I, it just, it got me, it got me really, really annoyed. Because it, it's like, like as someone who is overweight myself, like fat people are just, they're, they're just the most hateable people. People are, people are allowed to hate you. you. They're allowed to blame you for something that probably wasn't your fault. You did, nobody sits there and chooses, you know what guys, I'm going to get fat. That's my choice today, right? It's, it, nobody makes that decision. Like nobody actively, well, okay, well, there are some people who, you know, there's a certain sector of Twitter where, you know, those feeder people, that shit's weird, not going to lie. I can't explain that one. That one, I'm just gonna write that one off as like uh, the toaster fucking analogy. Um, you know, before the internet, there was probably people who, you know, wanted to do something weird, but you never found people who would encourage you to do it. Now that we have the internet, if you want to do something weird, like fuck toasters, you're going to find a community of people who fuck toasters, and then you're going to start fucking toasters. And it's just, it's, that's, that's, I'm going to put that one down to the internet. I don't think normal healthy people uh, uh, want to live life that way. Um, yeah, but there are, there is a certain subsector of Twitter that I found myself browsing on the other night where it was like, oh my God, these people are like, let's just say they're cultivating mass, but not in like a going to the gym kind of way. <laughs> um, that disturbed me, honestly. Um, not because they were fat, but because they were like intentionally getting fat as like a fetish. It was kind of gross. I, I don't even want to talk about it really. But yeah, I think I would like to get another hero. I think I will go for Beowulf. Yeah, anyway, this, but like th that aside, nobody's sitting down and being like, you know what, guys, I really want to be obese. I want to get fat. I want to be big. 
Like, I don't think people are really actively making that decision. What's happening is there's a complex variety of factors that are leading to people to make decisions that are bad for them. That's, 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 that's just like, that's just act, actually just true. Like true, true based and obesity pill. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the take 99% of people should have. And it feels like it's the take that like 5% of people have. Well, I really want to get Sinbad. I would think I'll do all my chopping over here in Seoul and then move Sinbad over and try to chop out Sinbad because he would be really, really fun to have. Um, because he generates a lot of gold. Right, I tried to convert Relics Rover Power to Rome. It didn't quite work, but I do have a Golden Age, so it's not like I need to convert much more. Um, yeah, it, it just, man, it just, it, it really upset. The thing that, like, part of, part of what upset me was, A, the takes, but B, that I could predict all of the takes. I could predict every take that was going to happen in that thread. I could predict everything everyone was going to say, that it's all down to, and it really does just come down to, like, people just don't have a nuanced understanding of what causes obesity. And you would expect healthcare professionals, like nurses and doctors, to have a newest, nuanced understanding of what causes obesity. This is their job. They could... They are in a position to massively, positively affect people with obesity. But they're a, but like the prevailing attitude seems to be that uh, it's their own fault they got fat. Keck W, eat less piggy, you know? And it's just, it's, it's just, it boils my piss. It pisses me off. That's how I feel about it. It's your, like, but now, now on the other side of things, I will, for any healthcare professionals in the chat, in the video, watching this video, I will... I will extend you an olive branch, okay? Let's be real, most patients <laughs> are really fucking lazy and absolutely actively, like, A, lie, or B, just straight up don't do what they should do to be healthy. Like, I will, if you're willing to onboard me with that take, if you're willing to, I'll clasp your hand on that take, if you're willing to do me the other way, come the other way and agree with me that obesity is a complex issue. Okay? It's not a simple, straightforward thing that could be solved simply and straightforwardly. Or, or well, the simple, the, yeah, the, the, the solution is relatively straightforward and simple, but it's the causes that make the solution complicated. Like, all right, if we could, if we can clasp hands and accept that and agree, then I think we're on the same boat. But that was really, that was really the thing I wanted to talk about today. Now, let me know if you like a video, what a hot take. But uh, yeah, I think I want to get my turtles online. I don't love that I'm spending money on that, but I think it is important to get both of these turtles online. Eventually, this will be a good population and growth farm and a little bit of science too, which is quite nice. Mostly the, the population farm in here. Once we get the lighthouse, we'll be able to grow a lot of extra pop in here and work a lot of extra tiles. But yeah, let me know how you feel about that. What do you, what do you think about the, uh, the obesity, the obesity take that I just gave? Like, do you think I'm on the mark? Do you wildly disagree? I want to hear because I guarantee you a lot of the people in the, in, in the people watching this hold those same attitudes that those doctors had. And I think it's going to be a thing that needs to be corrected and changed and fixed that, that these attitudes need to change over time because there really is, there's like an undercurrent of it's your fault when like the vast majority of what people do it's not their fault what or, or, or how the vast majority of situations people find themselves in it wasn't their fault what is their responsibility is to is to fix the issue if they're aware of it that's the that's the key shift i would like to see change but anyway yeah let me know what you guys think about that um so we managed to get himiko which is huge so we're gonna go send her to take control of rapa nui um, using her ability. So if you don't know what Himiko does, uh, basically she acts like a great general, which is kind of neat. But more importantly, when you go to a city state with her and use her ability, you get a free, you get uh, envoys based on the number of charges she has. She has eight, so I can get up to eight envoys from Himiko. But more importantly, you also get, if you're suzerain of the city state, you also get an extra hundred faith. So she can kind of like pay for herself a little bit. So she's quite good in that way. And don't forget also those extra, those extra envoys will pump up my gold per turn. So there's a lot of like effects and reasons that I want to get that. Just to, like, I'm basically, I'm stat, stat padding right now. I'm just padding my stats. I would really like to get a preserve, I think. I definitely need to get a forest down on this tile. Yeah, I think I think we're going to go for a preserve. I'm going to place it, but not build it. I would like to get the amphitheater and I'd like to get the commercial hub. So we're just, we're just building up our empire here right now. But you know, the, the, the obesity thing, this is like, I, I've just, I've become so... Oh shit! I can't put an industry in the city because I already have the marble industry over here. So I'm gonna have to settle a city in range of this turtle and swap the turtle tile to the city. I reckon we could chop out after diplomatic service. We could chop out a settler or two from Seoul. God damn, the city has a lot of population. But if we chop out a settler or two from Seoul, we could settle here and here and add two extra cities to the empire. I think that's what we're gonna do um, because that would just give me a little bit more control over spices and potentially also get this tea. There's a lot of a uh, lot of potential here for this to work out in my favor. And it'll also act as a good launching point if we do, in fact, decide to go to war with India, which I think is going to be part of our plans. Now, we are getting the 
Yeah, we're getting the full nine amenities. I do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's, I'm getting a full nine amenities, which is keeping my cities happy. That's good. Drop that plantation. We're going to drop the industry now, tobacco industry in this city. Boom, look at that. Tobacco industry gives you 30% production towards military units in the city. So this could be a military production powerhouse uh, city for sure. For sure, it could be. There is potential with that idea, I feel. Um, yeah, but like basically every take on Reddit, I feel like I've 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 become like giga woke. I've become I've like transcended the hive mind to the point where I'm like completely aware of like what the default normie take on an issue is, and I'll be able to predict every single response and explain exactly why every single person is wrong. But there's just too many comments, and even if I explain like the complex issue, like like I dropped a few comments in that thread about obesity, it's it's I I'm pissing in the wind. It's I'm never going to overcome the sheer willpower that people have entrenched into the issue because they, it's easier for them to just not think about it. It's easier for them to just not care uh, because it doesn't affect them, right? It, it lets them feel morally superior to another person. So therefore they have no reason to ever change their opinion on it. So we're going to do this and switch in the settler card. I'm switching in the settler card so that I can do, I can more effectively chop out settlers, basically, is the goal. Boom, five turns, pretty good. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. It just, it really, it really annoyed me. And I don't think it really annoyed me because I care, I like, because I don't really care about obesity issues. What I care about is that, what 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 annoys me is that I can, t I can just, I can tell that the takes are going to be bad and I know what the bad takes are going to be and I know why the bad takes are wrong and like the fact that I explain people why their bad take is wrong it doesn't change their mind that's what annoys me about it and like that is there's so many issues like that that come up in my daily life like when I'm reading I need to just get off reddit I think I think it's as bad for my mental health but at the same time I also feel like because I understand these issues and I have like a I have like a way of approaching things where I could maybe you know provide a little bit of nuance and cleverness to the way people talk about these things that maybe I have a fucking responsibility to talk about them I don't know but like am I doing that the correct way should I also make sure that I'm looking after myself and not you blah blah blah, blah. there's a lot, a lot going on there mm. so there's a couple of, couple of thoughts I'm having here about the governor's plaza do I want to go for an intelligence agency to get plus one spy and spy capacity do I want to go foreign ministry for plus three diplomatic favor or do I want to go grand master's chapel in my mind if I'm going to go to war with with India in the next era with my Voi Chens, which is probably going to be the main unit that I use against them, then I feel like I should go for Grandmaster's Chapel because that will allow me to faith by units. Being able to faith by units means I can mass up crossbows or archers on the front line and then use those using like an upgrade timing to do the attack. So what's the upgrade cost to this? So like a crossbowman is 180 gold. The base cost for a crossbowman upgrade is 250 gold. Archers cost 30, 60, 60 crossbow. So I think I would like to do a Voichen nationalism timing attack. So I can start stockpiling gold or I can faith purchase Voichens. If I'm going to faith purchase Voichens, no, I think I'm going to have to do upgrade timing. If I'm going to do upgrade timing, I'm not going to be able to spend much money or I need to get more cash in my bank. Let me see, where can I pick up the most cash? 150, what if I take one of these luxuries off the table? What if I'm just selling tobacco? Say 150 from you, if I'm just selling turtles, 66 from you, deal. Any horse buyers? Okay, we've got some horse buyers. Any diplo buyers? All right, so we have a lot of cash in the bank. I'm making about 100 gold per turn. I'm trying to think about what the price upgrade from an archer to a Voi Chen is. Not too much. See, my problem is I could I could buy all the Voi Chens, but I, are they going to get to the front line in time? What's India's science period? I think we could take India with uh, nationalism Voi Chens. So I think that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. I'm going to take out India um, just because they're in the way. You were in my way, so I eradicated your civilization. Just Genghis Khan thinks. Yeah, let's continue to spend cash here. I think expanding. You son of a mother. I don't believe you. Well, we're going to conquer his cities anyway, so. I mean, if he wants to do that, that's his right. Boom. So maybe one settler, depending on what this settler does. You go step there. Don't you dare. Don't you dare let them be smirch. Okay, I just spent all my cash when I was supposed to save it. But listen, we're chopping out important infrastructure. Let's go ahead and fully build a tan here. Okay, so Srinagar, that's fine. We'll conquer that. They're building walls. It should be simple. Uh, we managed to steal the spices. We built the tan. Let's get the barracks. Uh, go there. Let's get like two more builders to rebuild this entire territory. So yeah, I would like to buy all these tiles. So I'm kind of like, I'm in a little bit of a gold crunch. We'll figure things out as time goes on. Don't you worry. 
Um, you come over here to Rapa Nui. Any like freshly settled cities I could convert. That's really what I'm looking for here. Also, I'm tired of microing scouts, but it is worth it to micro because you can find more city states. So it's kind of like a double edged sword. Sfrod. Thousand year flood. Nice. Seven turns on the medieval era. So we would like to attack in a golden age. And uh, let me have a little bit of a think about how I could get to nationalism faster. What I'm going to start doing is moving my archers. Aha, aha, aha. I'm going to start moving my archers out of my cities and buying scouts to replace them. Based. Based and scout build. Uh, I got to keep bringing in the cash. So that's two archers I freed up. There's Hercules also might find use in this war. Archer, you can wake up. I should probably send the archers from the further cities first, but I've already begun, so we will uh, we will make do with what the plans are. Plus, I might have Himiko to help me in this war. We are just going to take control of Rapa Nui. I might just pump all of Himiko's charges into Rapa Nui to get control of it. We shall see. But yeah, I want to get all my archers over here because they can be... I'm pretty sure they can be upgraded into Void Chen. And that will mean I have a really, really cost-effective army ready to go. So I'm actually quite happy that I built all these archers earlier in the game. Because it is going to now translate into a, uh, a good outcome for me in terms of making this war a little bit easier to conduct. So there's still a few chops in here. I definitely think tier two tiles are worth buying because we're only 96 gold for a chop. But further than that, I think maybe it's a bit of a questionable decision. I also think there's a preserve potentially in this city. If I'm thinking about it, you know, what's my amenities like? I think I can maybe sell a spice. I really just need cash. I did just get one of these. Let's go ahead and get a trader in here. I can probably faith buy the trader in a few turns because I will definitely be going for monumentality. If I'm going for monumentality, I may as well start the campus in here, which means I need to place a forest. So I'll put a turn into ancient walls. I think one more builder in the city of Seoul should do the trick. And next turn, I think we're done chopping. Yeah, I think we're done chopping next turn. But Magnus, we can move him over to Dan Nan. All right, Himiko, do your job. Slowly take control of Rapa Nui. Plus, Rapa Nui will act as a nice border between... Oh, convert the city. Amazing. A pocket of my religion around the world. Yeah, I feel so much better that I got that rant out of me, dude. You know what, guys? T this is the video. Go into the comment section and just post your rants. Something, something boils your piss. Let the world know, okay? You'll feel better. Drop your hot takes in my comment feed. Okay, so we're going to chop out. This is the final builder chop. This should be enough stuff to get the city underway. It would be good to have an armory on the front line. I will go for that. We're making good headway. I like how uh, Vietnam, one of Vietnam's really, really cool effects is on their builders, as they plant forests on their builders, the builder moves into a difficult tile, plants the forest, and then gives themselves two movement for the next turn. So Vietnam is like one of the most effective civs in the game for reforesting. You don't need to plug in logistics like normal civs do in order for their builders to be able to move into rough terrain and plant, plant forests on the same turn. Just like really, really fun and cool uh, consequences of the ability that you wouldn't really think about. Uh, she wants a joint war with Korea. I would want a joint war with India. I will do. So let's let's see how does Scythia feel about India? Because if Scythia doesn't love India, I might be able to convince her to go to war with India in a military alliance with me. So how do you feel about friendship? So she likes friendship, resident embassy, alliance, military alliance. She hates India, so I think we can declare an allied war. Let's just go ahead and denounce India. Even if we're not really ready for the war, like who cares? He's get denounced, nerd. So I put my commercial hub there. I kind of wish it was here, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world. I wouldn't mind more holy sites, although I don't need more holy sites. I'm making really, really good faith without holy sites. It does kind of feel like it's still theater square season. And so it shall be theater square season. Place that theater square. We could place another district, maybe a preserve. I'll have to come through here and think about where the national parks are going. But for now, I'm not too fussed about it. I'm not ready to research Voi Chen. I will want to head towards field cannons because that could be a potentially useful upgrade to have. So yeah, then we just start planting a few lumber mills to give that city even more production. Himiko, keep working on Rapa Nui. We took Suzuki of Rapa Nui, huge technology. We now have access to the Moai, I believe, which is plus one culture, plus one culture for every two Moai, plus two culture if adjacent to or on a volcanic soil. So we could maybe set this up over here as like a Moai area. Like, hear me out. What if I just, what if I just start plotting this? We do a Moai here. We do a Moai here. We just go full Moai. Let me have a look at this. Grassland, grassland, hills, plains, plains, hills. So it has to be on basic terrain. Now, can it be placed adjacent to woods or rainforest? So I will have to cut back a little bit. The one problem I have there is this counts as woods. Oh, no. I actually need to find out if that works. Does that still count as woods and it blocks these two? If so, that's like huge, hugely problematic for my, my build. Damn, that sucks if true. All right, another city settled. Go for the old god obelisk and the granary. Probably granary first, honestly. Should be fine. Units are cheaper with production. So let me see if I can scrounge up a little bit more cash. 
get these archers moving buy a scout so i have a scout for you you have a scout get this archer moving buy a scout in here get hercules a moving so i'm just missing one scout so next turn i might be able to research void chen and build them for half price in a few cities especially if i plug yeah 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 i think we're gonna plug in that card the feudal contract if they're half price and we build them 150 percent faster oh okay so if something is full price and you build it 50 percent faster that means you build it in two thirds of the normal time. That means we would, that means for every one normal Void Chen we could build, we could build two of their half price, which means we're building them for a third the price. That's pretty damn good. We could do like a wave of extra Void Chen and do a major push. I might even declare war on Korea. Is there no protectorate war? Let's denounce Korea for a protectorate war. Let's hope our unit survives that long. Yeah, so we're going to do protectorate war with Voi Chen. That might honestly be the first war. Yeah, I think it will be actually. So let's get these archers moving to the north. So I need two more because I don't think Armagh can survive much longer and I need to keep Armagh alive because it's where I'm getting a lot of faith. So uh, get you out of the city. I will sell marble for that cash. I will buy. I will gold purchase a scout here. You move here, you move here. You move here, you move here. I will gold purchase a scout here. I will gold purchase a scout here. All my cities now have scouts and I can move my archers to where they belong. Um, so now that all my cities have scouts, and the reason I'm buying scouts, by the way, is because if I research machinery, I'll have to buy skirmishers and like skirmishers are 150 production versus scouts 20. So you're talking like a massive, massive price difference to trigger the retainers plus one amenity bonus. So like it's just, it's just I'm doing it in an economical way. Now I feel safe to research Voi Chen. I would like a one turn civic. Okay, it might be a two turn civic regardless, but a two turn civic is still, I think, acceptably good. Oh, I forgot to remove Magnus. Yeah, let's get Magnus and reassign him to, what was it? Danang? Danang. And then we'll get some builders in here to chop out a hero. Probably Sinbad, potentially. So we could levy Rapa Nui. I might do that in the next era because it'll potentially get me more gold. For now, we're just going to pump. We're going to pump envoys into Rapa Nui for the extra faith because I want to have a huge bank of faith. I'm really excited about this war. I'm going to get so many luxuries out of this war. Uh, right, there's machinery. Voi Chen. Um, so it's 290 gold. We'll be able to upgrade a Voi Chen every like turn or so. Hercules on the fray. Where are my archers at? There you are. Go ahead and chop that. I don't care if it's like a low value chop. Ooh, a Moai here. Boom. Look at that. Loving it. Loving it. Um, we'll get printing for the diplomatic visibility. That's plus three combat strength uh, in war. Very handy. Uh, diplomatic visibility is fairly straightforward and it's always good to optimize for. There's some tiles here that could use some lumber mills. We'll make sure to get those up and running. Archers are on the way. Himiko is continuing to charm. Okay, so the city of Arma is surviving. We're going to wait a turn to upgrade the Voi Chen because I want the four era score to happen in the next era. Um, it also gives me a chance to switch in an important card. So I don't need colonization anymore. I definitely want conscription. I think we'll plug in professional army. Uh, we don't need land surveyors anymore just for now. So instead of land surveyors, I definitely want to serve them because I am continuously just building builders to improve my territory. I should probably be building more builders, honestly. But I think liberalism is like a pretty good one here to go for because it might bump up. Just give me that little bit of extra amenities that might bump me up to where I need to be. Finally managed to get the aqueduct in here. The city is starting to come alive. It definitely needs builders. I just need builders. Like I need so many builders. That's why the monumentality age that's coming is just going to completely reshape my empire. Because I will just be able to mass purchase builders, which will like just change the game for me. Let's get a campus here. So yeah, we're waiting on the Void Chen for one turn. Do I want to plant here? Yeah, I'll plant woods. You can't place Rapa Nui. Uh, Moai heads next to forests, but you, if they've, if the Rapa Nui thing is already there, you can plant the forest. Okay, time to declare the war. We're in the Renaissance era. Civil engineering boosted, gunpowder boosted. We'll talk to you. We're going to say Cassus Belly. I lost suzerainty of the goddamn city-state. Let me get naval tradition real quick. That's kind of annoying and unexpected, but I can start making Voi Chens. There we go. Plus four error score. Very tasty. And this is honestly a really cool looking unit. Like, look at that. You got like the elephant. You got the dude on the back. He's got a bow. I had the UI. Hell yeah, look at that. Kind of reminds me of Age of Empires, right? Super cool. Really like this unit. And it's super strong too. It is basically just a crossbowman, right? 35, 40. If you look at a crossbowman, 30, 40. So it's slightly better defense than a crossbowman. But the big advantage is that they are stronger when they're defending, have that extra defense strength, they're faster moving, and they see further. So there's like, they're not like amazing. It's just a crossbowman push, but it's a damn good 
crossbowman push is the thing. Uh, so absolutely no universe in which we don't go for the final monumentality here because I can literally just go through my entire list of cities and faith purchase builders. Like even faith purchase the Gurdwara here, honestly, is better because that'll allow the city to grow. We faith purchase a builder, faith purchase a builder. Like every single one of my cities could use another builder or two. So if I just go through and buy a round of five charge builders, I just completely change the game for myself. Like what other ability in the game lets you do that? There is no ability in the game that lets you buy a builder in every single city and to have like faith left over. It's so good. Um, now in terms of faith left over, I do have two thra trade routes. I still think I should trade internally, but maybe it would be good to, I think I should start trading with Rome. Who's the top culture. I need to start trading with the Cree. So where's my trade route going? I'm already trading with the Cree. And so they're my number one opponent because they're generating the most tourism. I'm going to kill India so they won't be a problem. And I should also trade with Rome. So I'll go ahead and faith purchase a trader in here. And then I can, then I have room for an internal. I'll, I'll do Haolu and trade with an internal there. So you just got your harbor in here feeling good. You're Michael Buble in. Let's just get a... Oh, right. We were going to do Sinbad here because we're waiting for Magnus to establish. Good, good, good. If we look at the city of Hue, this city just needs a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and slowly build ancient walls. I should totally get rid of conscription and plug in limes, limes, so I can build ancient walls faster in my cities because ancient walls is honestly pretty cost effective tourism. Like it's 40 production, like 40 effective production for a plus one tourism per turn. I mean, you consider how much a builder costs, 138 production for five build charges. Each build charge is worth one to four tourism per turn. It's like, I would say ancient walls are like pretty on par. I definitely feel like this is an archaeological museum game. Oh, 125 faith from that one. Any more heroes I could purchase back? Ah, so Maui is in Don Long. Dong Hoi. I think I would like to faith purchase Maui and bring him home because he could potentially plant more luxuries. So we want to we want to plant Maui in woods, rainforest and marsh. Those are the three places where he has a really high chance of spawning a luxury. So let's try this woods tile here. Well, let me think about where my national parks are going. There could be a national park going here. Mm, next to all this appeal? Nah, unlikely. Never mind. Yeah, unlikely, unlikely. So basically, um, I think the odds work out that on a woods tile, you have a 9 in 10 chance of spawning a luxury. On a rainforest tile, because there's only one bonus bonus resource that spawns on woods, which is a deer. On rainforest, only bananas can spawn. On fl grass floodplains, you got a 50-50 shot. On desert flood floodplains, you got a 60% shot. What else? On reef, you got a 50-50. Yeah, so our best use is on forests that are not yet inside my empire, basically, that we can then really quickly purchase. So I think that seems like a reasonable move. Uh, let's go ahead and declare... Uh, I can't declare the protectorate war until we have naval tradition. That's okay. I'm loving these lumber mills, though. Two food, three production, one faith. Don't love this. Don't love that Armagh could die. I will take Marco Polo, though. That's plus one trade route. It's kind of huge, actually. So grants a free trader unit in this city, increases the trade route capacity by one, and foreign trade routes to this city provide plus two gold to both cities. This is a fairly centrally lo located coastal city. No harbor, though, is the big downside, but it is very centrally located. Let's do production. Yeah, we trade with Tan Long. That's worth four food, four production, and two gold. Then I'll send another internal over to... Honestly, internal trade routes are usually best placed in cities that are struggling, like Dong Hoi. But I have so many builders to use now. There is potential for a national park here. So, like, let's explore that potential. If there's potential for a national park here, there's potential for a preserve right there. I mean, that's four preserve tiles, so that seems pretty good. This city has what? You've got an aqueduct and a than and a holy site. So we're definitely feeling like maybe a commercial theater here, theater square here. Uh, actually, I would prefer to put the theater square here because then it would provide plus one appeal to, well, it, actually, it doesn't matter. I will put it here. So theater square here feels right to me. I could pop an entertainment complex in here, too because I don't have one in this area. I have an entertainment complex over here providing amenities here, but it would be good to get more. What's the overlap? Let's look for a good over overlap tile. Uh, this is only a two city overlap. I mean, two cities overlap is enough. Not efficient, but it's enough. Let's get our markets up. Traders right now just represent so much value. Get those commercial hubs on the way. Oh my God, I love seeing these lower bills. I should probably plan, should probably plan national parks in here. Although to be fair, we can worry about national parks when we actually have conservation and we're looking into war. Um, this one I wanted to trade with Rome. Let's see, any good Rome? Ooh, Hunza trade route. It would be fun. I'm going to trade with Pudioli. And the reason I'm trading with Rome is so that I get plus 25% tourism pressure against them. If I come down here, you can see plus 25% for trade route. 
So that'll just give me a little bit more tourism pressure against Rome. And Rome is kind of like number two competitor for culture against Poundmaker. And uh, I plan to kill Chandra Gupta, so I'm not too f- fussed about that. I will harvest this. That'll finish those walls. I'll buy more, more buildings in the city. And with Himiko's final charge, I'm going to do Himiko's rule to levy the city-state. And then I'll teleport Himiko to the front line to participate in the war naval tradition that should start next turn. I definitely feel like farms in here just make sense. Uh, Maui, plant. Deer, really? Wow, statistically unlikely that that happens, but I guess that is another chop for the Magna City, which I guess I'll accept. 110, eh? Maybe they fudged the numbers. They might have they might have fiddled around with how the numbers work. I wouldn't be surprised that the Civ 6 developers love fiddling their numbers. In fact, you could say it's an entire company made of number, number fiddlers. Personally, in my free time, I like to fiddle numbers too. You just, you know, you, you fool around with them. You move them, you move them this way, that way. You make equations, you do all sorts of fun things. Yeah, the Moai is blocked. Ah, uh, Saj. This is going to be a whole Moai area, but it's not going to be anymore. It would have been so based to based. I, I can still put a Moai here and here, I guess. It's not the end of the world. It's just not like the triumphant return that I was, you know, anticipating. So is this the last city that Magnus will be stationed in? Probably. Let's go ahead and make the industry. That's 15% extra science in here. More importantly, just give the city a really good tile to work. It's like the more important thing to me. And cities that finish a production right now should probably start building Void Chains. So let's go ahead and do... What we want to do is we want to come in here. We want to take Susan Tree of Arma. Boom. We want to talk to Korea. We want to declare protectorate war. Because we'd like to keep Arma alive. Then that kind of causes them issues. They get kicked around. They have bad times. They're still at war with you. I come in here, I Giga Chad explode all your units, boom. Oh man, look at that. Drive out the aggressors, volley. Oh my god, this civ is so good. Hey, does this not count as a forest, eh? Ah, if I attack from a forest into a forest, I get huge damage. Kill that knight, just make sure we get rid of units. Hercules is so good in this instance. More Voi Chen. Right, nationalism is a go, and if we get nationalism, we can start combining our Voi Chen. I could place Moai over here. The appeal is low enough to justify it, but I think I would rather do like woods and use this woods as a buffer. Start planted woods to increase the production. You know, I was going to trade with the capital with you for Than Long, but honestly, what if I traded for gold and just like got envoys like Mahenja Daro, Honza? I'll take the Honza. It's 16 gold trade route and an envoy. That seems pretty based. <gasps> Elephants, boom. All right, statistically, this is a luxury. Boom, chocolate, lovely. We love to see it. You love to see it. Magnus is established here, so we'll begin chopping out Sinbad. Faith by another builder to sustain that. This guy I'll use to explore, but these two guys I'll move. And then Himiko, I want to teleport her to the front line to provide support. Because she does give plus five combat strength and plus one movement. No, no, sorry. Plus five combat strength to all units within two tiles. So she's basically like a souped up great general, which is quite nice. What if I chop this? Can I put a Moai here? I like the idea of Moais on um, the terrain. God, the production in the city is absurd. We'll be able to make wonders in there. Oh, I like that these guys can move and attack. Let's take volley. So we're good against units. We might want to think about getting Biosphere this game. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Biosphere is quite a late game thing, but it would allow me to get a lot more tourism from my coastal uh, situation. Because this is, this is feeling like it might be a slow tourism game. <gasps> There's a forest here, of course. All right, all right. All the hot takes in the universe won't save you now, Korea. I don't care what you have to say about woke moralists. You're done and not just on Twitch. Okay, out of here. Our ma has been saved. Do we just go kill Korea? No, but what if we did? What if we killed Korea? They got luxuries, okay? Never mind about India. Korea's got luxuries. Uh, Korea has more tech than India, though. Let me have a quick check of the old science screen here. Uh, so Korea's like number two in tech. Honestly, Chandra Gupta's number three in tech. Here's the thing, though. Chandra Gupta doesn't have walls built. Korea does. I think we would be able to more easily hit Chandra Gupta. So war accomplished. We just like let her crash against my cities. Uh, and we just start moving south. Speaking of void chance, let's start making more. We're about to hit nationalism, which means combining these bad boys together is the exciting, like cool, hip new thing to do. And you've got to be cool and hip. Like, I mean, if you're not cool and hip, I mean, are you even really living li- living a life worth living? Like, let's be real. Let us be real with one another right now, chat. I like how I call you chat, even though no one's actually watching me. I'm just like talking in the dark on my own. So we do have Grandmaster's Chapel. We now can faith by uh, Vui Chen, which is what we are going to do. Uh, speaking of faith buying things, any heroes? No heroes. Um, yeah, so let's start faith buying Vui Chen for the war. Void Singers don't get upgraded until the next era. I don't need anything. I think Reyna is quite good. And the reason that I think Reyna is quite good is because A, she has Harbor Master, which gives double adjacency on harbors. But more importantly, she has forestry management. So if I have a city that has like a particularly large number of national parks, like, I don't know, say 
Well, I don't actually have a city like that, but let's say let's say I did. I could put her somewhere, and it would be it would be cool beans. Hypothetically, if that was a thing that had happened, then it would be a thing that I could do. But it is unfortunately not something that has happened, so I can't do it. But if it did, I would still be talking about it. Um, let's chop out that dam. Let's build the tan. Kind of forgot to place that. Should have placed that a long time ago. Just me being silly. Um, I need another forest. Maui. Over here seems like a good candidate. We can just buy those tiles really quickly. They're within range of my cities. A couple of them here. Too low of appeal, so we don't mind putting luxuries over here. Too low of appeal for anything other useful. Right, Sinbad is on the way. Boom, boom. I want you in my room. God, what a banger song. It's still relevant culturally, okay? I don't care what anyone says. Easily like a top five hit of all time. Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. God, you know what? That just makes me want to get drunk and jump around in the street. That's such a good song, dude. There may never be a song like it in our lifetime. Moai, boom, look at that. Very nice. The, the reason I'm building the Moai is A, uh, for the extra culture, but B, they also do generate tourism in the late game. So it's quite nice. I don't know where I got this knight, but apparently I, I think I think a scout stepped on a meteor. Right, so there's printing. So we have plus three combat strength against basically everyone. And now we're just basically making the Vui Chen on cooldown. If I move this guy out of the city, I can buy two at a time. The cool thing about these particular Void Chens is they do have a 50% experience boost thanks to being built in a city with an armory. Whereas these guys over here, these are like the older Void Chen that don't have that. They missed the uh, they missed the memo on that one. You protect this builder from this crossbow. Uh, so what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I think the next step is to get Renaissance walls. We'll want to build those eventually. I got my chancery. I think it's good to get the... Sorry, I got my consulate. I think it is good to get the consulate, the chancery. The reason I want to get the chancery is because it gives plus three influence points per turn, as well as a little bit of culture based on my relationships with other city-states. The three extra influence per turn will mean that I'll be generating about 10 per turn, which puts me up to a pretty good rate of getting envoys. The more influence you get, the more envoys you have, the more envoys you have, the higher the yield you will get from the chancery, right? If I get up to level three relationship with all of these city-states, that's like 12 culture per turn in that building that's pretty damn good so i do think that that's worth it to upgrade that it's just a lot of like i mean to be honest if you're not building it you're just leaving a lot of yields on the table and you know if you're leaving yields on the table like what the hell are you doing play a different game you know what i mean this is this is the game about yields you need to be the yield master you need to accumulate them you need to never let anyone touch your yields okay those are your yields you earned them. Yeah, it's a slowly build a theater square in here. This city is absolute dog shit, dude. It's actually terrible. It needs so much work. Well, I'll try to fix it. I'll try to fix it. We'll see. We'll see what can be done. Hey, a trade route that I can pillage. Yoinks. Thanks to the 70 gold nerds. I do like that, like, for, for um, Vietnam. I almost called this place Korea. For Vietnam, huh, you know, uh, uh, for Vietnam, the forests do act a little bit like roads and highway for you. So it's kind of like a neat, a cute little thing that you can do. Uh, let's just take these tiles under our control. We're planting woods. Let me tell you, I was planting wood with your mom the other night. Ooh, yeah, baby. Okay, Hercules getting slapped around a little bit. Let's bring him home. Plus one arrow score for finding nationalism. Excellent. So we'll bring Hercules home where he's nice and safe, where he belongs. And we can start to eat some of these Voi Chen. I know this isn't the most effective use of my faith, but I'm pretty sure if I'm able to conquer all of India, that will be honestly the biggest boon. A lot of people kind of criticize me because I never go to war. And I'm like, okay, if this is what you want, I'll go to war every single game when it's convenient. And every game will just be war. Just always war. If that's what the people ask for, that is what they will get. So we're going to build a few Voi Chen. I don't have an issue with it. This is what they wanted. So we defended Arma. That was a successful defense. We talked about, uh, you know, my pet peeve with like the conversation around obesity. And I feel like we effectively, like massively increased the appeal in our empire quite a bit. Like we basically rebuilt the city of Seoul to, from being like a backwater captured city to being like an actual 11 pop, like Giga Chat, 50 production per turn city. That's pretty damn good. I still have to spend a lot of faith on builders over here on this eastern half of my empire. It's like looking a little bit underdeveloped. Like look at this terrain there. Yeah, I think so. I'm thinking like a little bit of this needs to go into this. This needs all to be redeveloped over here, but we're, we're working on it, right? We did a lot of work over here in this area and a lot of work over here. We got to redevelop this section. We got to redevelop this section and redevelop here. Um, that's kind of like the main goal. And then, and then we also got to deal with the war in India. That's the, those are the main goals for the next episode. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that little rant. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.